Hello students, next we'll move on with the next topic that is assertion. So, in the previous uh, uh, video we had seen about exceptions. How you can handle the exceptions using um, try and accept statements, right? So, here we'll be speaking about assertions. So, assertions in a simple way if you're saying, uh, we can say assertion is nothing but it is like we are asserting that a particular condition holds true, okay? So, if it is true, then no worries. In case if it is false, then what is the meaning of that is there might be some error or bug in our program. So, in that case, what happens? Our program should crash, okay? But whereas in case of exception, what we had seen, we were using try and ex, uh, accept statements wherein you can handle that exception. But, but here in assertion, what we are saying, uh, if that condition what you are asserting is false, then in that case, the program should crash. Okay. So, uh, that's what we are saying. Assertion is a sanity uh, check to make sure your code is not doing something wrong. That is, you are performing the check. Okay. So, that is nothing but you can say you are asserting a condition. If that condition is false, that means there is some error. Okay. So, then you can say that your sanity check fails. Then, uh, assertion error exception is raised. So, here in assertions, we are using assert statement, which consists of, first of all, the keyword assert, followed by that a condition. So, that condition which you are asserting to be true. Okay. So, if it is true, no worries. Otherwise, if it is false, then the program, there is some mistake or there is some bug in your program and the program should crash. Okay. After that, there will be a comma followed by a string to display when the condition is false. So, we'll just see with an example program about this. So, this is your program. So, you can see here, here we are using a variable called as door status and we have initialized it with the value open. Okay. So, a variable door status with the value open and we are using the assert statement here. So, what did we say uh, here previously? We said uh, it consists of the assert keyword. So, that is what your assert keyword is there followed by that a condition. So, what is our condition here? door status is equal to open you're checking whether it is equal to open so in the first line you made it or you set it to open and in assert statement you are asserting that door status is equal to open so if it is true no problem otherwise what will happen then you can see the next thing what is there in assert statement is a comma so that you can see here Followed by that, in case if your assert statement, what you have asserted is false, then in that case, what should happen? A string to display when the condition is false. That is nothing but this is a string what you have to display in case the statement what you have asserted is false. Okay. So, this is one example. Uh, in the next, you can see here. So, again, so here what did you do? We made it to, uh, we set it to open. And you're asserting that door status is open. So, here there won't be any problem because whatever assertion you have done, that is true because uh, it is open only, right? But whereas next uh, third line, just check the third line. Here what you're doing, you are changing the value of that variable door status. You're changing it to, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I cannot do that. So, this is a status, uh, sorry, uh, this is a value what you have set for this variable door status. Now, again, we are using the assert statement. So, first of all, you have the keyword assert followed by the condition. So, just check the condition here. Here, condition we are saying as door status is equal to open. Okay. So, now what happens? You have changed the door status. Previously, it was open, but now it is having other value. So, here, what is our condition? Door status is equal to open. You are checking this. Now, in this case, what happens? It is false. So, what you have asserted is false. So, that time what happens? The corresponding statement will be printed. That is your assertion error. And followed by that, the statement that this will be printed. That is, pod bay doors need to be open. So, when the user looks at the statement, he will understand that what, what should be done. The door need to be opened. Okay. So, uh, since the asserted statement is false, 
what happens in this case the program is crashed okay so we'll just run this program and check out so you can see here uh, we have assertion error so this is nothing but what you have asserted what you have asserted is false okay since the assertion has uh, uh, whatever you have asserted has become false because of that you are going to get this error that is assertion error okay so it is saying that uh, the pod bay door need to be open so that is a statement what you have written in case the assert has become uh, false so next we'll move on with uh, another example so we have an example that is using an assertion in traffic light simulation so we'll just uh, see the program associated with that so here we have a program that is so uh, what is our program is we want to build a traffic light simulation uh, program okay so that is the program what we have written here so here uh, first of all we have to speak about the data structure what we are going to use so here we have used the dictionary so already in uh, the previous chapters we have learned the concept of dictionaries so dictionaries always uh, begin with the um, flower uh, that is a curly braces and followed by that you have the key and colon you have the value so dictionary consists of the key and the value pair okay so here you can see ns so ns is nothing but this is representing um, north south that is the direction in which the stop light is facing okay that is north south which is uh, having a light that is green and uh, the next direction is east west wherein the light is red so this is the data structure what we have used that is a dictionary which is having two key values that is nothing but north south and the next key is east west and the corresponding values are north south is green and east west is red color okay so that is about the dictionary now we'll come to the uh, here uh, we can also have one more dictionary here so for time being i've just commented it we'll just work with the single dictionary okay so and the next part here you can see here we have uh, written the definition statement for a function switch lights and the parameter what you are passing is stop light so this stop light is nothing but uh, here you can see here we are calling the function switch light and you are passing the parameter market underscore second so here market underscore second is nothing but the dictionary we have already defined it so i'll just uh, comment this particular part okay okay so here you can see uh, here we are calling the function switch light and the parameter what we are passing is market underscore second so we'll just see how the code executes so first part is the dictionary you have defined next uh, we will print this statement that is we will print market underscore second so that time what should happen the value of your dictionary should be displayed so we'll just run it first so you can see here uh, we'll just see the first part here so the first print statement is what we have given here is market underscore second so according to that the dictionary value uh, north south direction is having a value green and east west is having a uh, value that is red okay so next we'll come back to the program so right now this particular statement has been executed now we are going to call the function switch light and you're passing the parameter that is nothing but the dictionary dictionary okay so here you are naming it as stop light so here we have used a for loop so what happens in, uh, within this is each of the key of your dictionary is considered okay so for key in stop light dot key so what does this do is it is going to take every keys okay so one by one so first uh, uh, iteration what happens our first key is ns okay so we are checking if stop light of key that is here our key is ns okay is equal to green so in our case it is true right so that time what will happen stop light of key you are changing to yellow so green has been changed to yellow okay 
So if this condition is false, then you're going to the else part, wherein you're checking uh, if the key is having a value yellow. Now in this case, we don't have any key here in the dictionary, which is having the corresponding value as yellow. So we'll come to the next else if part. If your key is having a value red, then in that case, what we are going to do, we are going to change it to green. Okay. So accordingly, green has been changed to yellow and red has been changed to green. So once again, you are printing market underscore second. So now what do we have? We have the change value that is NS will be having a value yellow and east west NS is nothing but north south and east west will be having a value green. Okay. So that is what uh, we saw here when we execute this particular program. So you can see NS which was green has been changed to yellow and east west which was red has been changed to green. So now here you can see from the uh, just the coding part uh, if you're speaking then it is fine. The program is working fine but if you're implementing it uh, that is there's the simulation if you're implementing it in the traffic light then in that case what happens north south is yellow east west is green so what happens in this case the possibility of a crash will be there right so to uh, overcome that we can go in and use this assert statement so now we are we'll just comment this print statement so we will see the assert statement so in assert what did we say we have the keyword assert followed by the condition so what is our condition here condition is saying red in stop light dot values that means we are we should have a red light in this uh, values okay so for any of the key you should have a corresponding value as red so this is our assertion what we are doing so now in this case what happened green has been changed to yellow red has been changed to green so we don't have red color in our um, stop light right so this uh, assertion what you have done is false so that time what happens when the uh, assertion what you have done is false then program is going to crash okay and uh, accordingly this particular statement that is neither light is red will be displayed so that's what uh, we saw we'll just run this particular program now so now you can see so previously what happened this was displayed now uh, here the assertion what we have given here so assertion statement says that uh, we should have red light but in this case since we don't have red light the error is displayed here okay so this is about the assertion and the program which uh, uh, that is simulating the traffic light okay so next we'll move on with the next part that is logging okay so logging so logging in simple words if you're saying logging is nothing but you're maintaining some or you're trying to get some information about how the program is executing or how the code is executing each of the variable what value they're having in each of the iteration all those information is nothing but logging okay so logging is a great way to understand what is happening in your program and in what order it is happening so what is going on and in what order it is happening so for that you can go in for logging so whenever you are using logging that is whenever you want any log message then you have to include that is you have to import the module that is called as logging so i'll just uh, show with an example so we have a program over here okay so we have a program over here this is a program which is going to display factorial of 5 okay so uh, what we are saying so whenever you want to use this logging uh, concept then you have to include these two lines that is import logging uh, wherein logging dot basic uh, configuration so these two lines should be included in your program if you want to include or uh, if you want to uh, use the uh, details of 
how or if you want to get the details of how your program is executing or uh, what and what is the status of the variable all those things if you want to get then you have to input include these two lines that is first line is nothing but you are just importing the module that is logging okay so the logging module uh, you are having basic uh, config a uh, function which uh, lets us to specify what details about the log record object we want to see and how we want the details to be displayed so that is passed to this uh, module or the function that is basic config here you can see here uh, level we are specifying that is uh, logging dot debug so that is nothing but uh, the logging level so we have different categories that we are going to see in the next slide so the level you have given as logging debug and here uh, format here so what it is giving is uh, it is going to give you uh, the process id information and uh, also the date time when it is executed all those information so i'll just uh, run this particular program and i'll show you so we can see here so you can see over here uh, so yes so you can see over here uh, this is the details that is the time and also the process id and the logging what level what you have used and along with that start program so that is displayed here start program and also start of factorial so start of factorial here the value for factorial you have passed as 5 okay so i'll just um, do a slight change in this program so now we'll run it okay so now you can see so just uh, check this output this one okay so you can see here uh, when the execution has happened what is the process id what is the logging level you have used and in each iteration what is the value of your looping variable as well as in this case the total what is the value of total in each of the iteration that is displayed here and you can see here total value is zero throughout and also the result of factorial of 5 so in the program you can see you are printing the value of factorial of 5 even that has been displayed as 0 so there is a error in this program what is that error is we'll just get back to the pro code here so you have used a variable uh, total equal to 1 and we have used a for loop here uh, with the looping variable i in range n plus 1 so you have not given the initial value so in that case what happens is by default it will consider as zero okay so that time total is equal to total into i so anything multiplied by zero you are going to get the result as zero itself right so for that purpose here everywhere it is zero even the answer you are going to get as zero okay so that is i is string of i total is a uh, string of total so everything will be zero so to overcome that you have to do a small change in this program that is you have to specify the initial value so you have to write here starting from 1 okay so now we'll just save this and now we'll execute the program so now you can see in each iteration i value is changing and also the total value has been changed and finally the result that is factorial of 5 is 120 is displayed so this is about uh, the program wherein you are using the uh, logging module and uh, you are trying to display the factorial of a number okay next we'll come to the next topic uh, under logging itself that is logging levels so this logging levels provide a way uh, to categorize your log message based on the importance okay so there are five different logging levels um from least to most important so you can see here uh, debug 
so debug is a li at the lowest level whereas critical is at the highest level these are the more important one whereas debug is uh, not so important when you are comparing it with critical okay so debug at the lowest level uh, that is used for small details whereas info logging dot info these are used to record information on general events in your program and confirm that things are working at uh, their point in the program whereas warning which is used to indicate some uh, potential uh, problem that uh, doesn't prevent so it doesn't uh, prevent the program uh, from working but in future it might do so that is your logging dot warning and when you say error you used to record the error that has caused the program to fail to do something whereas critical is the highest level or the most important one is the critical level or uh, that is used to indicate fatal error that has caused or um, about to cause uh, the program to stop running entirely so this is nothing but your logging levels wherein uh, you are having different levels based on the importance so the first one what you have is the lowest level or the least one whereas uh, critical that is at the highest level okay so that is about your logging levels next you have a program related to this logging level we'll just see here uh, sorry i forgot to tell one more point okay we'll just uh, continue here so we'll do that over here so one more point uh, what i wanted to say here is so we already said in basic config we can tell how you want the logging information to be displayed right and what in all information you want to display so that you can write it you can pass it to basic config uh, function here one additional information also you can write that is you can make the details display in some other file okay not in your terminal but some other file so i'll write it uh, some my log dot txt i'll write some file name as my log dot txt so i'll save it so this is the addition thing what we can say uh, same in the previous program also you can write this that is wherein we found the factorial right so only the factorial value you can display here so if you want i will just uh, try it with the uh, fact so we'll just go with this program first so here what we said here we can write that is file name equal to my fact 2 dot py after that i have to put a comma so now we'll just see here i'll run this code so now you can see here only the answer 120 is displayed here and all this logging information so previously what happened all this logging information was displayed in the terminal right but now if you are giving uh, the file name in uh, basic config so in that case what happens the logging information will be stored in the file which you have given only the output here output because here you have given it in print right you have told print factor of 5 so only that value will be printed okay and rest of the things will be stored in this file so we can just open that particular file and just show you we can just open that is my fact 2 dot oh should i give it as txt let's see okay so you can see here that detail which was previously displayed in the terminal now it is stored in the file my my fact 2 dot py okay so this is how you can make your log information get stored in some other file so the file name in which you want the details to be stored you have to specify or you have to pass it in basic config um, here okay file name is equal to whatever file name followed by comma so that you have to pass it to basic config okay so that was about your um, fact program so now we'll come back to uh, logging level so here logging level we said we have different levels based on the importance so just an example program here so again here what happens file name i have mentioned here 
so whatever logging information will be there that will be stored in this file my log dot txt i'll just save this particular file and i'll run it so here you can see in the terminal no information is displayed but now let us open the file what is the name of the file my log dot txt so you can just uh, the file name is my log dot txt i'll give open so you can see here all the details are displayed in this file mylog.txt so what are the information you wanted a logging information wherein uh, when you have executed this code along with the process id and these are the different logging levels that is debug info warning critical uh, error and critical followed by that the string you have written in your code so this is the code what you have written logging debug uh, some argument you have passed as some debugging details. So you can see here in the file debug some detail some debugging detail. Similarly, next data info all this information. So whatever you have written in that particular code is displayed over here. Okay. So accordingly, a uh, very important one is critical, followed by that error, then comes warning, then come info, then comes debug. So this is about your uh, program related to logging levels. So next we'll see how you can disable this logging, how you can disable this uh, logging level. So we have one more program for that. Okay. So you can see here the starting part is same. Import logging, basic configuration, you are passing the uh, how you want the details to be displayed and after that you have we have written logging dot critical so this is your logging level that is critical and after that so this particular statement will be printed that is critical error critical error after that what you have done is we have written disable so logging dot disable function disables this that is whatever you have written after this Okay, that is logging critical, logging error, all these will be disabled. Okay, so uh, in other way, what you can say, uh, we have given disable logging dot critical. So before this logging dot critical, whatever is there, that is we said uh, logging dot critical, it, it is at the highest level, right? So logging dot critical is at the highest level. So whatever is lower or Whatever other logging levels you have, which is below critical, everything will be disabled. So instead of uh, critical, if you are given logging dot uh, warning, in that case, what happens? Warning. So before that or lower level of warning is info and debug, those will be disabled. Okay. So now in this case, since we have given critical, so everything, all the levels which are below this critical, everything will be disabled so we'll just run the code actually what should have happened if you have not given this disable even critical error once again it will be printed then error error would be printed but now since we have given disable whatever before this or another way you can say here these two statements so anyways both are before this critical and whatever you have written after this disable everything will be uh, disabled so you can see here when you're running this code, you have only once. So critical error is displayed only once. That is nothing but this statement. After that, you have given disable. So everything after that, all this will be. That is critical error as well as logging. That is logging.critical as well as logging.error. Both are disabled. Okay. So this is how you can disable a logging level. So, next we'll come to uh, the last topic here in this particular uh, uh, module that is IDLE debugger. Okay. So, we've already learned or we have already written many program and we have executed using uh, the IDLE. So, but about the debugger we had not spoken so far. So, now we'll come to the debugger part. So, debugger is a feature of IDLE that allows us to execute our program one line at a time. Okay. 
so line by line uh, to execute uh, one line at a time you can go in for debugger so using this uh, debugger we can if there is any error or we can also check what value is there in the variable at a given point of time so that for that it is very helpful so debugger will run a single line of code and then wait for us to uh, tell to continue so one line it will execute and it will wait for some response from the user okay by running our program under the debugger we can take as much time as we want to examine the values in variable at any given point during the program's lifetime so by using this debugger we will get to know what value is stored in the variable so by this way you can examine the values at even any given point uh, during the program's lifetime so this uh, is a valuable tool for tracking down bugs also so now we'll see how to uh, enable this debugger okay so for that you have to go to uh, ideally so i have to go to uh, our interactive shell then click on debug and then click debugger okay so when you click on this then comes our uh, debug control window so this is our debug control window okay so this is how you can enable your debugger now in this case what we have to do here is all this check marks should be ticked oh, sorry all this check boxes should be ticked okay so wherein it will have local variables global variables what's the content of stack all those information uh, that will be displayed during the process of execution of the program okay so uh, here you can see uh, when you are uh, enabling the debugger and when you are running the code then it will display the line of the code that is about to execute it's also going to uh, it can also display the list of all the local variables and their va uh, values and also list of all uh, the global variables and their values all those information can be got okay so this uh, debug control window has five uh, buttons here you can see here we will see what does this five buttons do so first one is go so by clicking on the go button it will cause the program to execute normally until it reaches the uh, termination point or until it reaches a break point so this go button what does it do it allows your code to execute normally until the uh, it is terminated or reaches a break point okay so if we are, we are done with the debugging and want the program to continue normally then simply you can click on go okay next is step this is a next uh, button that is step so clicking the step button will cause the debugger to execute the next line of the code and after that pause okay the debug uh, control window list of global uh, as well as local variables will be updated if their values are changing if the next line of the code is a function call the debugger will step into that function and jump for the first line of the code of the function so that is a purpose of your step and the next button is over so clicking the over button will execute the next line of code uh, similar to your uh, step button but there is a difference that is if the next line of the code is a function call the over button will step over that code in the function so the function's code will be executed at uh, you can say full speed and the debugger will pause as soon as a function call returns okay so that is about the over and uh, next one you have is out so clicking on this button will cause the debugger to execute lines of code at a very faster rate until it returns from the current function so if you have stepped into a function call with the step button and uh, you want to uh, keep executing instructions until you get uh, get back out then you can click on out button to step out of the current function call finally you have the quit that is nothing but if you want to stop you if you want to stop the debugging entirely and uh, do not want to continue ex uh, executing of your program uh, rest of the program then you can simply click on quit 
okay and if you don't want uh, the debugger then you can go to uh, our ideally and click on debug and just click on uh, once again debugger so that time what happened debug off okay so first time when you're clicking debugger that is nothing but your debug window is activated okay so all this should be ticked so using the debugger how you can execute is you have to first of all activate or enable the debugger so go to debug and click on the debugger so now you can see it is already click check marked okay and now go to the program so we have a program here so what is this program is you are asking the user we are asking the user to enter uh, three numbers and finally you are going to display those three numbers so here the sum is so the sum is sum means it's not the addition uh, what you're doing so three numbers if it is one two and three it's not uh, six but it is one two three okay means you're just concatenating all the three values what you have taken okay so first what happens enter the first number so you are entering so I'll just run this code and just show you so here since the debugger is activated okay so you can see here uh, print the line number one the first number add and you can see some um, built-in uh, as well as the file location all those information has been displayed so we click on go so now what happens the user has to enter the user has to enter the first number so in the terminal you will be getting like this enter the first number so i'll enter the first number as 45 and i hit enter again it is asking enter the next number i'll give 89 and next number i'll give some 36 so you can see here sum is 45 89 36 that is nothing but you have just concatenated all the three numbers okay so in this case what happens you have also used the debugger okay so here this particular thing is done so debug is on so once again if you are running you can give out so if you are giving out then what happens directly it is going to come here similarly you can just check out all the different uh, options if you give over so you can see here if you give over then what happened directly you came to the uh, function okay here i'll give some money okay so this is how you can use uh, the debugger so this particular program what it is going to do so if you don't want this debugger then simply go to debug and click on this debugger so it is executing i'll just quit from this okay i'll just quit from here and now i'll come to uh, the ideally i'll uh, check mark it so my debugger is off then now without using the debugger simply you can run the code okay so you're going to get the result so since this program is a simpler one uh, without the debugger you can uh, work out but if you have a lengthy program wherein you want to check uh, all the values of the variables then in that case uh, debugger will be helpful to us okay so you have a last part that is about breakpoints so it is possible for us to uh, add breakpoints wherever you require okay so here uh, this is a program that is given to you wherein uh, uh, thousand times uh, you are flipping a coin and um, that is simulating uh, flipping a coin thousand times so you are given one two thousand one okay so thousand times we are going to flip the coin and we are going to check how many times heads have turned up so that is your code okay so here you can see random dot randint uh, zero comma one so this will return zero half of the time okay and one other half of the time so this can be used to simulate 50-50 uh, coin flip so where one represents head when you run the program uh, without the debugger so here for that purpose so if i value is 500 
that is we can say half of the uh, part is done so total 1000 times you flipping so when you are coming to 500 means half of the time is done so how many amounts of heads are there so now what the concept we are speaking is we are saying where you can or how to put a breakpoint you can just select this you can set breakpoint okay and uh, you can run the code so in this case half done uh, that is if your i value becomes 100 then half done and when half done how many times heads have come up so in this case uh, 479 times so every time when you run you are going to get a different value so if you don't want the breakpoint then you can just uh, simply right click and clear the breakpoint so this is all about uh, this particular module that is your um, third module of your uh, syllabus wherein we had uh, four chapters from your uh, textbook that is pattern matching with regular expression reading and writing files and organizing files and the last one we saw was debugging so with this we are done with the third module thank you